Hi, this is Richard Chamberlain, and welcome back to the Protecting Your Family's Future podcast. This is episode number 120. Today, we're talking about how a successor trustee takes over in a trust. We sometimes get this question from our clients as we're talking to them about the trust and how it works. They're wondering when it comes time, how do their successor trustees get control of the assets that are owned by their trust? So the answer to that really goes to how someone proves that they are the trustee. When a trust is originally created, there are trustees that are named, the initial trustees. Uh, it's usually the trust makers if it's a revocable trust. And they will have a document either called a certification of trust or a trustee affidavit something along those lines. It may be different in your state. But the purpose of that document is to establish some basic information about the trust. And that information is then given to financial institutions that will have assets that are owned by the trust. So for example, if you want to put your bank account, uh, have it owned by your trust, you need to take that certificate of trust to the bank to provide that information to them. So the information that is in that certificate of trust or the trustee affidavit is the basic information that the financial institution needs to know in order to do business with that trustee uh, on behalf of the trust. Uh, for example, what is the name of the trust? Who are the trust makers? Who are the current trustees? Who are the successor trustees in some cases? Uh, what is the tax identification number of the trust? Uh, what powers do the trustees have to deal with assets that are in the trust? So that information is included in that document when the trust makers go to transfer their bank account, in our example, into their trust. They will provide a copy of that certification of trust to the bank and then they will have access to the bank account as trustees. So fast forward to sometime in the future when the trust makers are no longer able to serve as trustees. That could be because they become incapacitated or because they've passed away. The successor trustees now need to get access to the assets that are in the trust. So what they need to do is they need to prove that they are the trustees. They need to provide that same kind of documentation to that bank or financial institution that the trust makers originally did, that the initial trustees originally did. So they will have a new certification of trust or affidavit of trust uh, prepared showing that for this trust, these people were the initial trustees, but they are no longer serving as trustees because either they are incapacitated or they've passed away. Uh, and usually some documentation will be provided to, uh, to verify that, either a certificate of incapacity or a death certificate. Uh, and because those people are no longer serving as trustees, uh, the current serving trustee is now the trustee. And they may provide some documentation from the trust saying that they are the next person in line under the terms of the trust to serve. And they'll provide that information to that financial institution who will then allow that new successor trustee to manage the assets that are in the trust. So that's how the successor trustees take over. They provide proof and documentation that they are the trustee and provide that information to the institutions where the assets of the trust are, and they have full access. So if you have any questions about setting up your own plan or making um, modifications to an existing plan, if you are in Ohio or in Michigan, we can help you with that. You can reach out to us. Our contact information is in the show notes. I hope that's helpful for you today, and we'll see you again next week. Thanks.